So it is uh, November 10th, I think. Yes. Uh, uh, Doug, Fabian, and I have just had a first meeting where we've explored uh, about our stories of what have brought us to what we're doing. And we've had a first exploration of, uh, of our intentions and what it is that we would like to help to enact uh, as collaborators and as individuals who see uh, that new ways of knowing and being are in order, as well as there's some serious global challenges that we're all facing that I would suggest we first need to understand. Um, so this is a co-creative process. This is a, a peer-to-peer -peer generative practice uh, to be able to understand uh, where we're coming from uh, what we all bring to the table and to find some points of complementarity, explore difference and, uh, and begin to kind of give shape to uh, collaboration processes, protocols and, uh, and, and also just the human, very human elements of how we grapple with uh, both the challenges we face and the critical pathways through those challenges. Uh, so we've had a chance to do a bit of a deep dive uh, and now it's just you and me, Doug. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'd invite you to feed into this in terms of your intentions and what you'd like to explore together. I am, um, um... I'm generally, um, from a generative place, I'm generally contribution oriented. And um, you've expressed or shared um, sort, sort of an array of, you know, areas of um, generative focus for you. And I'd love to hear more, learn more. Um, and the one that, uh, because I've been reaping the rewards of it um, for the last week, uh, as much as I've been able to screen and, and uh, dive into your your archive of work. Um, but I'd love to sort of hear more and learn more about your vision for the video um, archive and conversations um, that you've been evolving and developing. Great, awesome. Uh, well, I guess I'd start with, first of all, I see value in everyone. Uh, I, I feel like one of the things that uh, both you and Fabian shared was an 18 month long to two year process of unlearning. <laughs> uh, and, and that's with reference to the dominant culture that we're embedded in, where it is extractive, it is uh, uh, based on, on uh, an economy that's not well understood, uh, but uh, forces a adherence to how the world is. Uh, and we all believe it. Uh, but as you mentioned, it's a, fic it's, it's a fiction. Uh, so where I'm excited to work and play is in the space where we, we take responsibility for what we can take responsibility for and uh, and experience new ways of being in relationship to the world, uh, coming from our own identity. So uh, part of that is to unpack um, how we have been disenfranchised and disempowered uh, in a, within a process of empowerment, uh, both personal and collective. Uh, so really, that boils down to just telling it like it is. 
uh, and sharing what we think so that we can we can actually figure out what our understanding of our collective context is because part of what's happening in the world today is it's so overwhelming that uh, it creates this immobilization because everything is just so very broken um, so it's it's my hope that through having uh, real-time conversations with people who have thought about this a lot as well as been deeply impacted from uh, our current circumstances to be able to uh, really look at those those details the devil's in the details and to find those points of intersection intervention um, that can nudge our systems into different ways and I think that a lot of that is by reconsidering um, what our value is and the different ways that we can use our natural um, gifts of sense making and storytelling uh, and uh, bring our knowledge and wisdom to bear uh, so it's I envision a process whereby we each get to say what we think is happening in collaboration with other people so that we can we can practice this kind of group sense making that can help us to see deeper farther uh, and more specifically into what's actually going on and what we can do about it there there's a <clears throat> There's a qualitative, qualitatively different energy and depth to your work. And have you thought about um, Have you thought about sort of how to amplify it from a touching, you know, a touching, connecting with um, whatever lies beyond the circle of folks that are aware of it, you know, the universe that the, the community or universe within which you've been creating them? Um, have you thought about sort of like how to expand that? And, and or not, because the truth is that's not necessarily required either. I, this is me going where I go, so I'll, I'll declare up front <laughs> that I, I'm extrapolative um, as a reflex, and the truth is that that's not necessarily required. Sometimes, you know, somebody wants to run a mom and pop, and they're not looking for it to turn into a billion-dollar you know, endeavor. Um, they want to tend their garden, and that's okay. So I, I'm sort of curious about how you relate to that question, I guess, um, and whether that's at play at all or not, because it's not. It doesn't. It's not necessarily. It doesn't have to be part of your party. It doesn't have to be invited. It is absolutely a part of the party and we are, we're in it right now. Essentially my hope is that through uh, exploring my own uh, very human curiosity about people and projects and the context that we will see that we all need to work together, that every person's contribution is required and that it's a massive state change of systems and consciousness that we need to be honestly in. And so what I'm, what I'm doing, my hope for the Global Challenges collaboration, in fact, was that was, you know, the, it was interesting because it was a little challenging and perfect in its perfect way um, to have the challenge be to create a global go governance system, okay? So yes, we need to learn how to make decisions together. Uh, but my intention in, uh, in being a part of co-convening this 
group of collaborators is for us to bring all of our pieces together to see what kind of gorgeous uh, tapestry that we could create so that we could better understand what we're all bringing to the party. Um, and there, I think that there's no unknowing. You can't go back from what you know. So once you understand that Arthur Brock's uh, work that he's been doing in collaboration with an amazing team of humans means that we can have an actual structural sovereign accountable commons and what that might mean. Uh, you know, I'm really excited to have your extrapolation mind on the <laughs> consequences of what it means to own our own data and be able to uh, be able to create tr a tr truly distributed applications for everything. Uh, and, and, you know, so there's, there's, so I'm teaching by learning. So I'm, I'm learning how to listen, how to hold space for others, how to deeply listen with a, with a, my, a bunch of my parts, uh, to be able to demonstrate a, it, people have called it a generosity. And yes, I, it, it's a generosity of attention because, and that's what I can invest. I can invest my time, my love, my, my attention, and my, uh, my intellectual value in knowing so many uh, change agents on this planet. Like I've been deeply steeped in change agents for the last couple of decades. And uh, there's, a, there's a tsunami of creativity that is behind us that I see and I want others to see. So, so I'm doing a practice of what it is to pay attention and invest that attention in people and projects that I'm inspired by and believe in, uh, in the hopes that other people see that there's value in that and that we co-create value such that that value begins to have real world meaning, not only in terms of affect and, uh, and uh, educating people or raising awareness about what we could actually do, uh, but also to teach people to what the inner configurations are um, to be really real and authentic as we're on that exploratory journey together. Um, I'm a, I'm a very human human. I've got, I've got lots of, um, uh, challenges, uh, and I'm wrong a bunch of the time. I make a ton of mistakes, but I'm here to learn from them and be honest about them and take ownership for, for and the the other piece is is that yesterday uh, last night I watched our piece that we did with the Global Challenges collaboration, and the one of the most important opportunities that we have is to use ourselves as our own teachers. So when I see myself and I'm like, oh Tamers, you didn't say that. <laughs> you didn't say what you were actually thinking there. You held back to be polite or you had a sense that it wasn't right timing or, you know, these things that are, that are just about being present in the moment and responding to what's being presented in a natural way. So that's my, the practice is to do that and be that uh, and to teach others how to do and be that while dangling this carrot of if we worked together on this, we would be an unfor unstoppable force. And that's not a carrot that is, there's no stick. Uh, it is simply a deep knowing that we have to work together. Uh, the basis of this uh, collaboration initially looked a lot different than it, than it uh, has developed into. And, you know, there was a period where it was really Daniel Harris and myself um, who, you know, were looking at, because his thing is interoperability. So Daniel Harris has 
uh, has been working with uh, digital media uh, and uh, rights, management rights. So really interesting in your wheelhouse. Uh, and uh, essentially it's something that could be built on a blockchain that shows how much each artist has contributed to each song so that when there's payout from that digital artifact, that digital um, the song, that each person is paid according to their contribution and that that's an automatic thing. Um, and so Daniel, that's one of the pieces that he's created. And Daniel's whole thing is about open source and interoperability. And so we, he and I, in our relationship, has known each other for a couple of years, um, were just having a deep sense of knowing that if we were to be interoperable, him, his ideas are on the, on the technological sense, interoperability between systems. Uh, and what I was bringing is we need to be able to interoperate as humans. Uh, so this process, that the process that has emerged from that bid to uh, create a global governance structure um, is, is this, is being in presence, sharing our knowledge, looking at a shift of paradigms of really understanding and uh, creating artifacts that can, uh, that can, Im that have value embedded in them um, so that we can co-value together, right? So yes, it's the emergent. It is. Yeah. So. Interesting. We need to learn by doing. That's it. Yeah. I, um, I, I have, uh, I've become more uh, over over you know the last few years. I've become more and more um, disconnected from the ownership proprietary meme, and and you know the in connection with Fabian's and my work, <coughs> the, the sort of third pillar of um, human-centered, value-centered, in service to commons, um, that the truth of in service to commons from a human generativity space and each person as a as a contributor to commons is that and and on one level it's a trim tab uh, shift and on another level it's a it's a whole leap <laughs> um, which is um, what if you don't invite the transaction meme to the party that my contribution, my generation of value and contribution to the commons is a one way deal. And actually the only thing I really have to focus myself on in terms of my choice, discretion, authority over what I do with my time and my attention. That, um, that the generative part of it is what is on me. And the flow of value to me in whatever way, shape, or form is a different thing and doesn't have to do with the, the outflow, with the contribution. In the capitalist setup, in the industrial setup, everything is a binary transaction. Everything is quid pro quo. Like, does that really work? 
like it's so failing in so many ways for most of the global population like there isn't even an opportunity for them to play like like let's set up a system and then you know over time dramatically reduce the number of people that can even participate um so we've sort of decoupled those things now that's a really the reason i say it's a trim tab is okay let's leave the transaction add-in out the quid pro quo part out and it shifts the question and this was huge for me personally individually in terms of how do i want to function in the world where the terrestrial and the maslowian stuff uh, is part of reality right and i have never ever now i sir i had you know ego me long ago left and you know retired a long time ago but um that version of me had huge antagonisms about money and belief about money and whatever so whatever money was going to flow to me was going to flow through me and i wasn't going to end up with a lot of it um because i didn't know how to do that and i didn't care and i was and there was a whole package of stuff for why not if i have all these beliefs about people that have money and whatever so but letting all of that go you know did homework learned about money and how to relate to money and you know had a lot of money flow into me in the past and i expect there'll be money that'll flow into me in the future if i'm generating generating and contributing meaningfully um that uh that'll happen and so if i don't want to relate to the world from a quid pro quo place and i really want to relate to the world from a, a donative place um and I'm not quite sure language-wise, word-wise, whether gifting economy works for me, because I think the word gifting has a whole connotative package of potential, you know, associative judgments and emotional responses and stuff that I'm not sure are required. So as a word and as a construct, I, I, I don't know whether that rubric works, but I, I know that, um, doing quid pro quo doesn't work for me like i just don't like it doesn't mean i don't like getting paid it doesn't mean i don't attach value in contexts where you know the market and the industrial world relates to do this get that right but <clears throat> um i just that's not me that's not me um, and I made, so in the face of that, you can sort of choose to do what's not you and, or commit to doing you and then deal with and figure another, like, what's another way, right? And so, and this is really relatively new. Like, I haven't even done the inaction part of setting up the things that I'm, I now have a clear picture about setting up. but. Um, I don't have to make it a quid pro quo from the standpoint of how do I get forgiving, right? It's what I can do is relate to it from the standpoint of I can create the channels and mechanisms for value to flow to me, right? And so showing up so participating contributing as a as a contributor right um triggered and produced emergently your curiosity interest desire to like ask that's a value in our you in fabian's in my world that's a huge value you saying i am interested in giving you time and attention um and knowing more about whatever like that's a big that's a big give that's a huge value thing 
coming into us as a flow, right? Um, so opening up channels for that to happen with money, opening up channels for that to happen with help in the myriad forms that that can take, you know, coding. I, you know, I wish I had that aptitude and I keep hitting, you know, running into that wall because I'm like determined to not have a limitation around it, but you know, really could use like some coder help yes. um, with, with building some stuff that, you know, is required, not building, but really sort of talking about interoperability, integrating yes. existing yes. stuff in service too. So, um, so the, 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 um, in the, in the, in the purest sense, if I am in service to commons, then the proprietary ownership meme, control meme around, which was really, ownership was really about control, right? It, and it was about, and it's, and, and ultimately scarcity, because it was in service to a commercial driver, like I own it, you need it. Like that's the dynamic of a, of a capitalist system, right? That's what it's grown out of. And so, um, what if you take ownership out of the equation? What if planetary resources are planetary resources for everybody? Well, I would say, you know what? I, it's it's sort yeah. of like yes, yes. Um, I'd like to I'd like to jump in because I I love where you're going, and I think that those are really important questions. And given the state of consciousness and how people understand uh, uh, the world in terms of this overlay of extractive ways of knowing and being, if we uh, float the meme that everybody owns it, really, then we're 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 back to the race for the bottom it's potential i'm not saying that's the absolute outcome obviously uh, that's not what we're aiming for um, but i think that there's some paradigm shifts in terms of ownership and i think you do have your finger right on it and um here's how i would put it so so number one I would like to see human beings having the same powers and responsibilities as corporations. Much of the power that has been uh, designed through our uh, socio-economic whatever has brought us to this point has been has been around extraction, and uh, and obviously that's gotten us to the you know a pretty fast-moving train on climate change, uh, as well as destabilized. Uh, you know, governments and uh, all kinds of challenging challenges that, you know, it breaks the brain to think about. Um, what if uh, we were to begin to migrate uh, some of the powers of corporations to human beings? This is just an open question that I hold because what I see is, is that the, the human has been carved out of uh, most of that agency. Uh, and so ownership, I think it's a very important thing to, to knock and test. And what I would like to see us do is to look at more ancient ways of knowing and being indigenous cultures that are at whatever point of intact or not, as the case may be, to be able to see their, their ways and learn from their ancient ways of being in relationship with the world. And I think that we need to be informed by that. You know, there's this, there's this sense of newness and absolutely there's an unprecedented chance that we have right here to pay attention, um, to look at where we are and to uh, work together to right the ship and uh, navigate a course through a critical path that can take us to a different paradigm of knowing and being. Uh, and I think that there's, 
there's, yeah, looking at indigenous ways in terms of gifting. You know, you talked about that gifting has a lot of this kind of overlay and that sort of thing. But the way that indigenous peoples gifted was a part of their sacred uh, sacred relationship with everything else and, a, and coming from a recognition of, of appreciation and gratitude and, uh, you know, even deeper than that, a knowing that if you harm the other, you harm yourself. And so there's some, there's some really simple and yet deeply complex, uh, um, ways that we can learn. Uh, if we honorably approach indigenous cultures and people to be able to share with us their ways of knowing and being. So, uh, so there's, there's that piece. Uh, but getting back to this. So, you know, for me, the, the, we have the ability uh, or there's a recognition, let's say, that the noose is around the neck of humanity right now. And that noose is psychological, economic, and actual. But it is based on uh, a belief in a certain kind of reality that doesn't hold water. Uh, and so I, I see that one intervention is to recognize that uh, that we as human beings create information and can self-create information, data, in, uh, wisdom, knowledge, uh, artifacts that embed that wisdom and knowledge in them, and that that can't be taken from us. Uh, you know, there's this whole, this whole thing of intellectual capital and having the intellectual capital of a human being uh, drawn from them and, and embedded in a non-human entity, a corporation, and that that intellectual capital is then separated from the human being. I say that that's a point of intervention that we can just model. This is my media. It belongs to you too, because you're in it. But this is me, and I have the right to create it. I have the right to distribute it. I have the right to um, ask for people to contribute to the creation of this and more of this. Uh, and if people are inspired by the potential that lies within it and want to participate, every new person that either contributes or wants to be a part of or wants to pay their attention to it are increasing the value that's here. And the more minds that can come together on it, the better. But in specifically in terms of that intervention, it's to take ownership of the artifacts of our identity in the form of, uh, of media that's documenting our intellectual value and offerings uh, in such a way that we can create a tapestry of what those offerings are as a first stage to drawing the investment that is needed to them. And it's not just financial investment. We need people to uh, be interested, um, to uh, participate, to put their piece in. And I think that, that is a, that's, that's the switch that I'm excited to support and demonstrate and creatively explore with others. Yeah, yeah. I, I, um, the, there's, there's, if, if you, in principle, if you commit to if you commit to the the thriving and dissemination and expansion of the the value and significance of the contribution to the field in a way that's in alignment with and consonant with values about how you do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
and 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 I'm going to change that language. It's not how you do that, but how that happens, mm -hmm. or how that's catalyzed. Yes. Um, then what are the ways or are there ways to, and this is, this is like obviously not just our challenge. This is like the challenge of, of, um, you know, just the probably thousands or tens of thousands of, of communities like this, right? Um, but what I've begun to sort of stew on, I my belief around the ownership meme and the whole IP and intellectual property constructs and all that stuff is that it's it's really long outlived its usefulness and it makes absolutely no sense and and really doesn't need to be invited to the party at all. Um, and that the if you get out from under that and you um, shift sort of the emphasis to the value, not from a fiat currency finance standpoint, but the sort of value from a human experiential, human being and experiential standpoint, um, and that the people that are on the receiving end as audience um, are going to map, you know, to an array of, such, of circumstance or an array of affordances and capabilities. And um, that for some of those, it's about, you know, um, experiencing the pull of this and ending up in. For some, it's um, watching and sharing watching and commenting, you know, any level of escalation of interaction above and beyond just the primary time and attention acknowledgement of value in watching it. Um, and so, and there are some, and there are some who um, their, their resource and contribution is money because there've never been more people in the world with, uh, an obscene abundance of wealth way above and beyond anything rationally relatable to in terms of what to do with it. Um, and that for those people, there's a new patriarchy opportunity for them um, to recognize and acknowledge this kind of value because they have money to provide, mm -hmm. to underwrite, to subsidize, to whatever. So, um, The generating of pull and the um, and the catalyzing of expansion of weight in terms of as a center of gravity and as a force and contributor to the field in in terms of transformation and repair and <laughs> improvement of of how we're doing us. Um, is a the, the inquiry and approach to that? I think there's a there's a new to be figured out, and I relate to that as a to be figured out. The reflex is, you know, okay, how do I market? How do I package? How do I, you know, there's the push stuff and there's the um, inauthentic leveraging of and all you know all of the dark art stuff and um they're there and they're immutable and they're they're ubiquitous but that's not um that's not the answer for the other side and and so being the change it starts with us like we got to figure out how to do this in our you know in a new way um and uh and I really think there's a vision around that, <clears throat> that um, it begins to emerge if you eliminate the quid pro quo, the transactional. If you free 
the generative from the flow back. And it becomes more about part of my responsibility as a contributor is I also have to sort of like provide the means for the flow to come back, whatever that looks like. <laughs> um, and, um, and to a certain extent, by doing it, just by sort of standing it up, it says to the universe, you know, I'm like really open. <laughs> and there are always going to be, you know, back in the music industry days when peer to peer hit and sort of like spelled the end um, of the traditional music business. Um, there was uh, a reality that 20% of the market would steal music and would always bootleg and steal music. Like they were never going to buy their agenda and goal was to acquire for nothing. And 80% of the people that were fans or appreciators of a particular artist or, or record would buy. Like they just, and, and that wasn't socialized or compelled or forced. It was just in the, in the dynamic of um, their, the, the, the channel that was set up as the means for them to flow value back if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and so, you know, my, my whole thing has been like everything Fabian and I are writing and creating and doing is open source. And it's going to be, it'll be set up to be available through an Amazon. It'll also be set up to be available through this. It'll be set up to be available through channels that are, you know, dollar compensation based and the, the it it's and not or um and um and that the the sort of substantive instantiated value of our contribution will define and determine what flows back yes and i i don't know i you know what i mean i it's a um and you know part of part of this is that the way that um that the value of things has been is is a sorry what is it called when it's not itself it's a point of abstraction so money is a is abstracted from what value actually is and i think we have an opportunity to kind of 52 card pick up what we understand value as having been and <laughs> at what it is that we choose to give value to. Like, I think that's the really deeply generative space. And as you know, I know that you've given a little read to uh, the intellectual and social value agreements that I've, uh, that I've put I'm out. Still, I'm still digging. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so in there, essentially, you know, if I were to Coles notes it, what I believe we have the opportunity to claim as our human birthright is access to all artifacts of our identity. That means data, but that also means this. Um, and if we turn that one around, um, that we will no longer... Uh, and, and really shed light on the fact that this extractive paradigm has now moved directly to us. Yeah. We are the ones, and that's the noose that I'm talking about around the neck of humanity, is that uh, you know, we are being specifically extracted from in terms of our behaviors, our clicks, our, you know, this social sphere that we're in. Well, it's the matrix, isn't it? We're, we're, to Facebook and Google, we're in little pods of data generation that they can capitalize on. The only thing that we're relevant for for them is driving sales of ads and rev generating revenues. We're not human beings. Like, they're not, they don't care about the human being part. Yes. <laughs> so, absolutely. We can, <laughs> we can decide. Uh, and if we create some... Uh, some beautiful structures that are co-created through, because there's many of us that are like, I think that there's just this kind of 
knowing that that has been coming for a long time that there's different ways of being some people have had decades to work on their work some people are coming to this a little bit later um, but I feel that the underpinnings of what we're talking about that need to be shifted all of those have so much uh, uh, intersectionality with each other because it's coming from the same thing obviously stuff's broken in really specific ways and people all over the world have been creating uh, things within a different paradigm of being that to respond to that that is of value I'm suggesting that if we bring all of our all of our offerings of value together that we can create something that is beyond our wildest imaginations because with all of our imaginations on the job um, we uh, we have it, it's mind-blowing um, and the other piece that I've been really thinking about that I'd like to share right now is about us having all the time in the world. <laughs> uh, and while there's some cognitive dissonance in that, in terms of, I know that we don't have, we don't have time to put off starting or doing. Uh, but what we do have is all of the time of all of the people that are conscious right now that is happening right now. That's seven point however many billion souls and units of time that we can all participate in. So whether you're out on in the ground in a community um, helping to teach and grow and listen and support, or whether you are wanting to participate with these Venn diagram style um, explorations of other things thinkers together to be able to explore what we all bring to the table and help on that front or whether uh, whatever it is that that we are doing that is a value that uh, and can help us to transition I lost my train of thought in the middle there um, <laughs> I I you know I've had it's interesting in in three or four over the last decade in three or four community contexts where um, a person stood up a a group or a community and the call for you know there are all these people that don't participate there are all these people that are registered or that opted in the 90 percent that are invisible and and i've always taken the position and said that if they opted in that was a contribution yes and to whatever extent they're checking in or reading or not or following or not to whatever extent there's one three second notice of a email from this in their inbox that they don't even open and may even get deleted that's a three second contribution that it all adds to the field yes and human time and attention is the singularly most powerful generative thing there is yes like that's the source yes so so um the It's really hard to parse and separate the value meme if it's related to within the industrial construct. Like, unless you get outside of the industrial package, um, it's really tough to not have it constantly feel like it's reduced to two dimensions. Yes, agreed. Right, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, you know, I can't get, away. it's too much, it's, it's too, uh, there's just too much stuff that's locking it into that mimetic place. So one of the, one of the kind of metaphors that I like to use is we're basically using a microscope as a doorstop, right? So you're talking about the two dimensions in terms of the economy. Uh, and what, what I'd love to explore with you uh, is 
the implications of the social, uh, the intellectual and social value agreements um, in terms of other metrics of value. That was the stream that I was on that I quite kind of lost the, my way on um, because there are many, many metrics of value in terms of how it's expressed in reality right? People knowing things, people making a decision based on what they've learned from someone. That's a huge value to us. Um, anyway, so I'd love to explore all that. I would note that I have another session coming up in about 20 minutes and I need a little moment in between. Then, what I would love to do if you're open is to offer um, a space of collaboration that we can participate with. We're already in it, but I'd like to make it explicit. Um, what and so I'll share what I would value. Um, I would value you continuing to work in this space, work and play in this space, share your insights, and uh, deeply consider um, doing this as well as one of your processes to be able to explore um, other people's work in whatever way motivates you. But I would really like more chums who are also doing this, and so that we can really make the process feel right uh, and so kicking the tires on that and I would also really deeply value your legal mind on that starting place for the for the intellectual and social value agreements um, and to have a dialogue about that okay yeah that's not a problem I'll and and um, I think rather than using the comment function which is sort of cumbersome constraining um, what I'll probably do is sort of create a, 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 a DLBV version um, where I sort of interstitially uh, can riff. <laughs> and, and, um, what is DLBV? If, if my initials. You know, oh. just, I'll create a me version um, where I can sort of interstitially riff um, and then that could provide sort of a basis for, for you know, conversation specifically about like that. Um, and uh, um, so I think that's probably the most effective, you know, if you're okay with me doing that. Then that is so exciting. That would be the approach. <laughs> Well, I've been waiting for someone to take that piece of work seriously for several years now. Okay. Uh, and it is the found, fundament, fundamental, foundational sort of piece that came through. And again, like you, I'm, I'm just trying to channel what the, what the, um, what's, a, what's, what's coming through and be honest about it. I don't own it. Well, I, I know you got to go. I'm going to, what, what's, I'm going to tell you, I'm probably going to generate two versions. One version is the things that I bridle against that this is premised on. I'm going to suggest a sort of alternative paradigm. Great. Um, because Doug Engelbart had the vision for it and it doesn't have to do with ownership, doesn't have to do with property. It has completely to do with attribution and, and capturing of the means to flow value back. Yes. Which is very different and doesn't, necessarily have anything to do with the sort of transaction thing um and yeah. but then i'll do a version that's like accepting of your starting frame so you can sort of like a b and c <laughs> okay awesome okay yeah i mean part of your work in unlearning has given you certain sort of windows into where I might be using some industrial language that it, so it's not a it's not an unusual phenomenon in our lives in Fabians of my lives these days <laughs> uh, it's we haven't met anybody yet that's that's clear completely clear and out from under <laughs> totally. yeah wonderful well thank you thank you so much um, I think that my uh, it looks like it might be that my 11 o'clock has canceled. So let's have a proper goodbye. Okay. Uh, so uh, just in terms of what you feel that, let's do kind of a co-learning to, to wrap up. Um, and, and I'll let you kind of, kind of guide that piece uh, just in term, because you are in an unlearning, relearning space. And I value those skills you have. Uh, but for me, 
I am learning how to both be deeply present, listen, and refer to long-standing things while allowing everything to kind of be, be unmoored. It's, uh, there's a practice of, of pulling up the moorings of the foundational thought that I've uh, come to believe. Um, but as we test those things, um, I'm absolutely willing to let go of um, and reform uh, how I how I come to know things, for example, even. Uh, so, yeah. Well, the, the catalyst provocateur in me, I've learned also to be aware that um, I don't need to disrupt or or separate you from the belief. I don't need to be right is where I'm going with this um, or need you to agree with a, a, an iteration or variation of mine based on whatever reasons to provide value. So that's why I said two versions. One version is providing value within the frame you've set up and defined, which is sort of the unconditional love version. Yeah. And then there's the, you know, don't know whether you want this, whether you'll like this or whether you're ready for this, but you know, here's my unfiltered take uh, and the thinking for the whys and the wherefores behind that. Um, just for shits and giggles. <laughs> and I, I don't have any ego attachment to my drafting or anything that I create or contribute or, you know, I just, I'm not vested in that way. I'm not connected to it in that way. So um, it's all in service to moving the ball up the hill. <laughs> well, and, and just in terms of, of the offering from my part, like I'm, I'm doing my best to put words on something that I feel really deeply inside that needs to shift. And I'm a high school dropout, you know, I, whatever that means, but I'm not a lawyer. Right. So your your skills and knowing and your specific pers perspective, especially being, you know, your area is entertainment law like that's I, I can't believe how brilliant. <laughs> well, synchronicities aren't, you know, there are no accidents. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, that feels like great next steps and some, some real clarity. Very cool. Of, you know, we've got some things to do. And I, I would love us, I would love for us to see whether we can figure out, and I'm going to revert to a very, like, businessy place for a second. So forgive me, I'm, I'm giving you warning <laughs> so that it doesn't come as a shock. Um, I believe what you're doing is sort of the evolutionary extrapolation of TEDx because it's not look at me it's not that whole narcissistic self-promotion thing that's not there's none of that energy there's none of that there's just none of that it has it's nowhere near your work number one number two they're deep dives they're not superficial like I have an idea, I have a better idea. Like, here's my idea. Here's my brilliant little gem, right? I, it's just got none of that. It's, it's a deep dive with people that bring huge value and you bring huge value in your understanding, but you also have a, one of the dimensions of your skill and talent in this is I was once at a, uh, there was a New York Science Festival thing with um, uh, um, I think it was with Richard Leakey and a few, uh, and Alan Alda, Richard Leakey and a few other, no, 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 it was uh, yeah, it was, it was a Richard Leakey thing on the sixth extinction. And the day before, there had been a presentation on epigenetics, which was unbelievably fascinating and made 
so much sense. Sort of like the, you know, genetics are like the engineers, right? It's, it's, it, it's not the point. The epigenetics is the software. That's where the magic is happening. <laughs> and, and where, you know, stuff can skip generations, be carried forward generationally on a biochemical genetic level and, and all of that. And um, we were waiting outside and, and a woman behind me and I got in a conversation and, and um, so she, you know, what else have you seen? And I shared the epigenetics thing and she said, oh, what's that about? And I sort of gave her, you know, my take you know, and she and she she looked at me and she goes, you know, you're really good popularizer. And I said, that's an interesting term. What is that? And she said, well, you you translated and encapsulated a relatively complex subject, and it was like really clear, and I understood it, and that was great. It's that translation function. It's that, um, and. Um, I'm capable of that, and I think pretty good at that as well. And but but I recognize in you know you bring that also. So when you're sort of sharing back your take or your understanding, you're not just translating; you're actually interpreting in a way that enables a much broader range of intellects and, and, and capacities and perceptual abilities and understandings and knowledge bases to get it easily. Um, and I had tracked and followed the, the hollow chain thing. And I think, is there a woman involved with that named Fernando Ibarra? Yeah, Fernando. I know Fernanda and, and she and I, you know, have a connection. I, I follow everything she does and, and I'm a big fan. And, and so she was involved with that and I followed sort of the breadcrumbs, but had not gotten it until your piece. Like you did that, <laughs> which I really appreciate. And like it really sort of because then there was this whole legacy bunch of bits and pieces and breadcrumbs that I had accumulated around it and then never been able to mm -hmm. like, extract the value from and, and, you know, get generative around. So, um, so that's a, that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. And, and um, so I think there's that there's also that you are, clear you you are clearly or ha have been and achieved a certain center of gravity in in terms of your presence you know virtually in the um sort of thought space you know the the shakers and the movers and the leaders and the thought makers out there you know, you go to this, you go to that, you go to that, you go to that. You're in it. You're like part of it. And there's artifacts. It's not like you just happen to join. You know, it's another LinkedIn <laughs> addition to the quiver. It's like you're a player in all of these places. That comes through. That projects. And not to invoke a... Um, not to invoke a an industrial construct, but the leveraging of that in service to sustainability, in service to figuring out a, a, an affordance and channel to flow value back, to flow support back, to flow resources back, to flow all of the things that would feed your work and uh, expand its ability from a dissemination, from a touch and contact point and, and all of that stuff, um, I think is, is out there. You, you know, you've done that work. You're there. I don't know whether you're already realizing a, a flow back from it, but I think you could easily um, for just putting the channels in place to enable it and letting people know that, they're there. Like it might, you might be really surprised. 
<laughs> if I were, you know, in the life circumstance, financial circumstance that I'm in, you know, I'd be a card carrying member. I'd sign up. I'd do a Patreon thing, whatever, you know, um, in a heartbeat. Um, and and I'm a newbie. You know, I suspect you've got folks that have been following you for how long? You know, 17 years. You said 2000. Well, so. <laughs> Certainly I have those relationships and I want to thank you so much for that uh, really generous, positive feedback. Um, I, it's real. <laughs> like, you know, we don't, we don't like, we don't own our shit in that stuff. No, exactly. exactly. We don't because like, I'm not, you know, I'm not, the fact that I can do what I can do automatically with new business ideas and whatever, you know, like that doesn't that's not like really valuable <laughs> it's easy it's easy or you know uh, i'm not you know worthy of asking or i'm not good enough or i'm not entitled all that shit you know it's shit <laughs> so yes. so one of the big things for us in relation to each other in relation to other people we we connect with is to acknowledge and affirm what we each of us sees in the other and leverage that because we're generating and and contributing to the field but you know if we aren't realizing all of the potential generative power we have to contribute shame on us yes and the only limitation on doing that is the degree to which we don't believe we're that big or we're that valuable or we're that powerful or we have that much to contribute. Yeah. That's the only limitation. We're the gods of our own lives. There, there's no higher authority. So if we're not, you know, kicking it as big as we can kick it or as far as we can kick it or as effectively as we can kick it, that's on me. Yeah. That's on me. And so if I can, you know, help you sort of get to closure with your significance in the scheme of things. I mean, I, you know, that thing with your name was because I, there really is a, almost an intimidation and an awe. I, as a, as a realized person, and it's funny, Heiner, <laughs> In your piece with Heiner, where he went through the pyramid thing, and he was sort of like, well, you know, I'm not, I'm on like the first round, I think you're on the second, and by the end of it, he had you up toward, you know, tickling toward the top, and the, the whole hierarchy thing, but you're, you're, you know, you're really unique, and a very powerful person, and a very powerful woman, and a huge voice, and that's a big deal, that's a really big deal. Like you need to know that. <laughs> it's true. It's really true. Thank you. For I'm not the only one who has become a fan of yours. I know there's like a whole lot of people out there. So um, you should know that. Thank you for that. <laughs> You've got me. Teary. <laughs> Um, but the, I guess what I'll just also close with, because I'm now a minute and a half out of my next session, um, is that what I'm looking to build is for everyone. And unless, like, yes, I would like to see myself compensated for doing this sort of work. I would like for others to learn how to do this themselves. And I would like for us to build a system that compensates people for the value that they're creating. And not necessarily, as you say, in a, in a- um, Quid pro quo way. No, in a, in a way- In a flow way. In a flow way, in a full system way. I have these things to give. I have these other things that I need. Let's look creatively at how one does not equal the other. And the greater is, is it, you know, the sum of its parts is something really special here. And I'm just one example of a person who has something to offer that doesn't have a system in which to offer it in. Um, and so in terms of having value come back to me, um, it needs to have everyone in mind. Like I, I essentially, if I bottom line it, I've just put about two months worth of 
of work. I've worked the hardest that I've worked in, uh, in years uh, to be able to have a small nest egg to be able to work over the next three months. So I have time. So this is what, and, and I believe that we can co-create value such that compensation can happen for all of us. So that's what I'm aiming, aiming for. I'm, I'm there and help in any way I can. Awesome. Okay. Well, here's, here's Peter. He's in for our next session. Peter, I was just finishing up. I'm, with. And I'm out. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>